This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Stratocasters and I got asked a question about this one yesterday and I thought maybe I could do a video about sort of my favourite strats and where I'd rank these in terms of one another. Now four of these you'll notice have the wrong headstock. These are built by K-Line and if you are a fan of the channel or watch the channel or even you've probably heard of K-Line and uh, these are made by one guy in Missouri and uh, essentially they are obviously strat copies the one sort of exception is that instead of uh, 
using shims and stuff like that to get a low action. I think out of the machine, he uh, has the neck pocket at a slightly different angle. Aside from that, it's basically pretty stratty. Uh, it's a Wilkinson bridge on all of them as well. And I find the Wilkinson bridge is really actually incredibly good. Uh, probably for me, the best trim system in a vintage style that I've ever tried. Right, so what's important with the Stratocaster? I guess one of the things that people care about uh, quite a bit is weight of strats and so I wanted to you know this one here is the lightest by some margin the blue k-line which is the first k-line I ever bought I bought that one actually for 800 pounds off of a forum best thing I've ever bought I think uh, this one weighs seven pounds seven ounces really nice weight for a strat this is light for a strat this is you know light to medium this one and this one weigh about the same, £7.08, I think, maybe slightly beyond. And then the Fender American Vintage 2 is the heaviest at about £7.13, so nearing £8, which for me, I think, is the upper limit of the sort of ideal weight range for a Strat. Now, obviously, these are all within quite a small range of weights. You know, there's not even a pound amongst all of them, but... I think it also, when you pick them up, it's very difficult to tell the difference weight-wise, weight -wise, to be honest. Even the white one sort of compared to the blue one, it's not, it doesn't feel, it's not something you can reliably um, gauge, I think, by, by hand. You do really have to have a machine to check these things. Obviously, the day of time that you check them and stuff like that can also make a difference. One other thing that people seem to care about on strats quite a lot is the darkness of the rosewood if they have a rosewood board and uh, in terms of that i guess the yellow one has the darkest alongside the blue whereas this uh, gold one has slightly lighter rosewood and so does the white one and obviously the maple is maple so that's uh, excluded from this conversation um in terms of fret wire and stuff they all have the same the k-line ones have 1605 i think the Fender American Vintage has vintage style frets, so vintage, is it vintage tool I think on those? Um, but to be honest, the fret job is decent, so I've not really noticed that being a problem. One other key difference is in the finishes on the back of the neck. Now the blue and yellow K-line have like nitro, but it's starting to wear, whereas the gold K-line has roasted maple, and the white K-Line has this really nice kind of relic-y old style finish on the back of the neck, which is super comfortable. If you remember the British Racist Green, which is uh, with David Beebe at the moment, um, that one has a similar neck finish. It has very similar specs to this white one, actually, um, except the pickups are different. And I think it weighs about the same as the gold and the yellow one. Other things that are important on a Strat, of course, are the pickups. Now, the most important uh, position is the fourth position right Corey Wong knows that we all know that and so I compared that at the start and I was quite surprised that the gold one came out sounding very bright compared to the others and I think of this white guitar as quite a bright guitar that rhymes but it actually seemed to be fairly similar to the blue then this has K-line signature pickups in it which are Chris's version of the Lola Dirty Blondes kind of this one has Monty's this one has uh Chris K-Line Signature uh, 59, I think, pickups. This one has Lola Dirty Blondes, and this one has the, uh, whatever those are, 57 Pure Vintage uh, pickups. Now, I think they all sound pretty stratty. As I say, this one's the brightest, the spankiest, and I think this one came out quite dark, and these two comparably are, uh, darkish and maybe this is darkest i'm not sure let me know your thoughts in the comments for the lead tones i was using the bridge pickup on all of them and when i use the the amount of gain and compression that i do for lead tones i think they all start to sound relatively similar of course they're all strats but i was quite surprised at how different they sounded with the clean tone um let me know your thoughts in the comments about which you preferred if you had a preference um in terms of looks i think i favor gold and white, most of all. Uh, I think those are really cool colors. I initially didn't really like the ice blue, but these days I really do because I think that's uh, a really cool finish. 
I don't think there were many actual ice blues around the time that Fender were making these types of pre-CBS strats. I think they were mostly refinished. I'm not totally sure on that. Next shape, this one has a soft V. This one has the, you know, 57. It's got a slight V to it as well. Um, neither are aggressive Vs. If you've ever played like a boat neck, I think that's kind of what I think of as an aggressive V neck. This feels slimmer as a result of not having the shoulders of the C, but these are all medium C. And I think those are my preferred neck shape, sort of medium C. Um, and yeah, that's perfect for me. It feels kind of full in the hand, um, really great to play. In terms of playability, I didn't used to like this yellow one as much, but Monty's did a really good job on it. Um, and they also sorted out blue for me when that one needed some fret dressing. i shout out to the guys at Monty's. I think they do really, really fine work and I really like their pickups. But yeah, this one now plays incredibly well. And honestly, all of the K-lines I really like. I think the blue one I favor most of all and the gold one maybe least of all because it's got that V-neck, although it is most unique. I think that would be the one that maybe I would let go first if anyone asked. Of course, the Fender wouldn't get a look in, but this one I, I'm keeping because Fender sent it to me, which is cool. And it has a maple board, which is subtly different to the rest. I don't know, to be honest, in my opinion, I'm not sure that the maple rosewood thing makes a huge difference in my experience. What does make a huge difference is that nitro on this maple type board gets quite sticky. Over time, I'm hoping that goes away. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, let's rank them, I guess. So this one, no, this one, I think probably reasonably a very cool guitar, but I think I'd peg it slightly beneath these. I'm not going to peg a guitar. Uh, and then the gold one, maybe. Then the white one for me, then the yellow, and then the blue. That's the way that I would rank them. But these three are very close, I think, in terms of... Uh, how much I like them and some days I can pick this up and go wow most times I pick up the blue one and go wow and I pick up the white one and I go wow Th these are all really fine guitars I'm also really impressed by this one in some ways I think it's a great guitar I think the pickups in it sound really good and it's really fun to play at the moment the change in weather has taken a bit of a toll on it the most annoying thing about all these guitars is that adjusting the truss rod is done in this annoying way and I think that's a thing that I'd like to change. Yeah, that's frustrating when in, in the UK, the weather does change a bit and sometimes it's necessary to add a bit more relief to the neck for me in winter when things get colder. Um, so yeah, I'm not really wanting to take the necks off these to do that kind of job. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, those are my favorite strats. I think it's too many strats for one person to own, but this is my one thing that I let the gas kind of uh, be a thing with instead of just selling them all I think well it's okay to have one vice right let me know your thoughts in the comments cheers for now it'd be really cool if you could share with me your favorite strats in the comments I know Jake's got a really awesome Fender custom shop Lake Placid Blue 61 not an actual 61 custom shop obviously and he's just picked up an SVL which I'm hopefully going to get the demo on the channel fairly soon but I'd love to know your thoughts as well if you've got K-Lines, Sirs, Fenders, custom shops um, Bravewoods, all the cool stuff. Let me know. Cheers for now.